saw it. We saw the big one. We did see the big one. Oh, man. Should we clarify what the big one is? <laughs> well, I've seen a couple of big yeah, ones. Yeah, wow. Okay, good for you. But this is the Star Wars The Last Jedi. I know. I'm very excited, Chris. Oh, you got us into... It was a movie premiere for I... for just for press. Waiting for weeks. And I got a special email, and I, I oh. responded, and I hooked us up with two tickets. Yeah. Oh. It was pretty special. It was an amazing... Okay, but I, I got to... Oh. Your I gotta... mandate... Yeah, it was right, a mandate. Right. We, we, we did go to lunch after, too. Yeah, we it did. Was, oh, it was wonderful. Chris treated, by the way. I Ooh. Very special. <laughs> okay, so Chris, I got to be honest. Uh, Star Wars mm-hmm. Episode Eight: The yes. Last Jedi. Yes. I There were a couple things I didn't see coming, so I'm going to assume people have seen it. By sure, now. Let's, let's go let's with just, that. These are spoilers. spoilers. These are spoilers. Right. Certainly. Okay. The part where Ray turns to the dark side yeah. after Poe doesn't call her once they hooked up aboard yeah. the Millennial Falcon and then Kylo Ren, who, when you see the movie, you're going to know there's a little weird stuff going on. Yeah. There was... He films it yeah. and shows it to Luke and Leia at a family reunion. I did not see that coming. That was awkward. It that was just, it was awkward. It was really it uncomfortable. Was awkward. But I mean, it was still exciting and thrilling. And of course, in the, the part where uh, Chewbacca sits on the porch. Oh yeah, the Millennium Falcon. That was a little bit upsetting because well, it was such a cute port. Well, and, and how about the reaction from the crowd to that one? Oh, like I didn't expect the cheers. I know. I you thought, know? but it must be like the Ewoks. People yeah, hate those porgs when they actually see them in play. And oh, well. And then of course, when look, the last time we left, that Luke was on that planet. Yeah, and he had been on that planet for a long, 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 long time. And then he finally gets to meet with his sister once again. And of course, the first thing she says is, "You didn't call. You didn't write. Right. It was. It, it, it was." The lines were probably it, weird. It wasn't the best dialogue. No. It, uh, it, wasn't it was the all. right emotion. But here's the part I didn't see coming. Now, uh, and this happens very early in the movie, which mm-hmm. really shocked me because you hadn't heard about this. And I, I wrote it down in the theater. All right. Han Solo isn't dead. He's actually been hiding his force powers all along. His name is Ki Han Jin. Yes. He's actually the son of the very early character who trained Anakin. Right. Right. So that blows my mind. He's not dead. He has Jedi powers. And we take that all the way to the end of the movie when we find out that it's going to be Kylo, who's now a good guy. Right. Luke, Ghost Joda, Ghost Obi-Wan. They're planning to resurrect Anakin. Not Darth Vader, just Anakin. Right. To take out Snope and Rey. Who's now like Queen Empress Evil? It's stunning. It was, it was crazy. I couldn't it believe crazy. it. It was unbelievable. Guys, it was amazing. Guys, guys, was, guys, guys wait, wait. What? I read the reviews of this on Upgroove, and, and none of that makes any sense. None. Was it? None. I wonder what movie they saw. Yeah, we we didn't see the movie. <sighs> I knew it was just a pure mandate. We didn't see somebody. We didn't. Uh, somebody got the date wrong. Yeah, uh, so I, I I got the date wrong. We show up at the at the moon. This then this part now here from on from now on is the truth. Uh, I got an email inviting me to this thing. I responded. I got my reservation for two places. Invited Rob to come along. We show up Tuesday at the movie theater in the Southside Works, and we find out that it, the screening was. The day earlier. Oh, man. 24 hours earlier. Way to screw the pooch. Man. It was so disappointing. I was so pumped to see this movie. It was still my best date of 2017. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so I hear you guys had a good lunch at the it BB's was, Mongolian yes, Grill. I've always wanted did. to go. We you did. Gotta, you've never been to the Mongolian Nev, Grill. Never. Oh, we have to go sometime. you got to go to Maybe the Maybe there's a movie Grill. Chris can get a, a pass to and you guys can miss that there. Some, I don't, some sort of concert or something. I don't know that I'm ever going to be invited again to, to I'm pretty sure you won't. Yeah. Because the best was the kid. I apologize. The kid said, at the... Uh, at the uh, stand where you buy the tickets, <laughs> we're like, we're here for the movie. And he's like, is there another one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. I knew you guys were really looking we're forward like, to seeing it. We're like, yeah, we're those old guys. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. I felt like such an so, idiot. Yeah. But, but I still am excited to see it. I'm so probably going to go see it either tomorrow night or yes. Friday when it opens. And uh, in your movie quality Chewbacca outfit? I don't get, I don't go that crazy. I know people go well, nuts. Let me just stuff, say this. I don't do that. So, if you're going to go see it this weekend, if you're going to go see Star Wars 8, The Last Jedi, this weekend, there are probably going to be lines, so get there early. Yeah. And since you're going to be carrying your uh, magic machine anyway, your your cell phone and all that, just download 
the Upgroove podcast. There you go. And listen while you're on the line. And listen to me, Rob Rossi. Chris Pastrick. And Jill Leonard. And here we go. All but right. then again, if they've heard us tell them to download it, then they've already listened to it. Right. So I, I'm just telling them Download again. older ones. That's download older a good ones. Point. Right. That's what Jill I Jill makes yeah. a good point. Right. Yes. Jill saved this. So. <laughs> as, as I often so. do. So there's, you should download older ones. But now, Jill, you don't go to movies. No. No, not Our plan not, was no. to tell you all this. But Chris, Chris uh, also screwed the pooch here because I said, "Don't tell Jill because she'll never know." Yeah. If we're just making up the Star Wars, I, I script. wouldn't. She wouldn't have yes. known. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So yeah. the only thing that might have flagged me is Chewbacca sitting on the porg. <laughs> see, that's the one thing I can see happening. Yeah, okay. right. You know, right. Just. <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard the noise coming yeah. out of the porg. <laughs> um, but so you, but you've never seen any of the Star Wars movies, or you have? I saw actually, and it was just this weekend. I've seen parts. I can't tell you the first one I saw, which I talked about the the gold men. But I think the we decided they were men, yes. they right. were Ewoks, right? They were, Ewoks. Ewoks. they were not, in fact, gold at all. No, at I got all. confused. They I was were thinking furry of, little. Creatures. Maybe one of them had a yellow shirt on or something. No, no, she's just wrong. Okay, on this. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I saw that, and then I saw a few minutes of is it Revenge of the Sith? Yes, yeah, uh, very good. My fiance had it on the other day, and we were watching it, and he eventually, like after five minutes of me asking kind of what he figured were inane questions. He told me just to go do something else and stop on <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I've seen like maybe 30 total minutes of and, of every Star Wars movie. But now, does that just not movie. appeal to you? No, not at all. Now, well, you don't what? watch movies much. I think we should clarify. You're not a... You're, you're She's not a big movie fan. No. You're, you're, and you're more into like a, a raunchy humor type movie. I like raunchy humor, or I like some sappy love story. Yeah. But okay. I, I, when I, I don't like movies to challenge me mentally. I know that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, then I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. The prequels would be right up your alley because well, they don't challenge anybody. That's true. Nobody, yeah. That is movies true. Movies to me are an escape. I want, so I want to be. I don't want anything oh. that's going to make me sad. Okay. I don't want anything that's going to make me. What's more of an escape than a war in the stars? Yeah. Yeah, but it, it just doesn't appeal to me. Like sci fi kind of stuff. Huh. I want to see here fart jokes or I want to see somebody fall in love. Those... So you probably would like. Uh, the the robot chicken version of yes. Star Wars. Yes, yes. Because yeah. that is a lot of fart jokes. And, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. If it has fart jokes or two people falling in love, I'm in. Great. I do feel that it is something that every American who was born after 1980 has seen, if not one of the films in its entirety, knows the cultural reference. There are very few things oh, I, I think that. you can say where you can find a cultural reference to tie everybody together. Like the Alabama Senate race that just concluded. Like <sighs> those those two sides agreed on nothing, but they could probably have a conversation about Star Wars. Yes, I agree. Every, and I don't know anything like that. I don't know anything like that. Uh, I mean, there culture. are some things. Uh, but over 40 years that, like, has kept going. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I see right. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you certainly know who Darth Vader is. Yeah. yeah. If somebody said, may the Force be with you. Yeah. You're I would know not that's from lost. Star Wars. So, but th- th- I think that just proves Rob's point. Because right, exactly. I haven't really seen right. any any of it, right. but I know I know the references. The Penguins had a Star Wars night Exactly. Last with week. Anthony uh, Daniels. Yeah, Anthony showed Daniels up. That was there. pretty slick. Yeah. Um, but there are Star Wars nights throughout America and yeah. Canada, and I mean even over in Europe. It's a it's a huge thing. I was listening to the XM radio on my way out maybe two weeks ago. They were talking about how Star Wars was really the first movie to prioritize the licensing of the merchandise. Well, yeah. That's story, how George Lucas made his money. Yeah, yeah. and that's the, the crazy story about that is, and I'm not stealing your thunder, no, I don't mean no. to steal your thunder, but... I know he took less money directing because I think the story was at the time when he when he signed on to do Star Wars when they approved right. the project I don't think American Graffiti had yet come no. out so they signed him to a certain amount of money but then American Graffiti hit and did really it, well. it did really well so they had to pay him more money he said no right. Don't get, don't pay me more money. Just give me the licensing fees, and they like they laughed at him, and said, oh, "Sure, yeah. you take that." Word and they're now like the most valuable toys ever. Uh, the original Star Wars character. So in a way, he was every brilliant. everybody's been impacted by Star Wars. Because name a movie that comes out now, especially for kids, that doesn't right that doesn't. Oh, see it's that. all but, marketing. But I do think it's also sort of geared towards a certain gender. It's definitely a male. Uh, I, I mean, the newer ones gear more, gear more towards women. But so I don't think Jill would be the only uh, girlfriend, fiance slash wife who have looked at their significant other and been like, okay, yeah, just. Well, the first <laughs> one. I mean, I will say that the first one did challenge the 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 role of of a female 
right. in the movie because Leia was not your typical uh, you yeah. know, woman in distress. She was a kick-ass woman right. who was who, pretty much in charge of her by own the third station. one, they have her chained to a fat slob in a bikini. Yeah, that was a big... Yeah, yeah. well, Lucas made a few yeah. serious gaffes so, along the way. But Star Wars... So, like, let's not talk about the movie because obviously we didn't see it. <laughs> we didn't see but, it. But uh, I think when you think of Star Wars, there's, like, stages of Star Wars fandom, right? There are the people that are going to go see it the first couple of days who are... Who have seen everyone and will dissect it. Dressed as a stormtrooper right. and, and yeah. it breaks out. There are people who will watch it on TV it's a, if it's on. Right. Um, there are the people who really live for the moment where you hear the music. Da da. Oh. You know, and that's sort of like. That's me. That's sort of like the orgasm it's, of the Star it's Wars thing, cool. you know? It's, yeah. And there, but I do think it's at the end of the day, the stories aren't all that great, but the characters obviously touched people in a way that. I don't even think George well, Lucas would have anticipated. Careful about touching right. people. Yeah. Up, certainly. I was yes. going to say, touch yes. the way of Roy Moore touched Well, people. right, right. And as you know, in our fake Accused. Star Wars... Accused. Accused. Yeah, yes. As, as, we, as we've as we learned, uh, that was what happened to Jar Jar Binks. That's why he was <laughs> exiled from the movies. Wait, uh, wait, really? Uh, yes, really. They didn't do any more with Jar Jar Binks because uh, Jar Jar Binks uh, was actually accused of uh, sexually harassing um, young... Uh, uh, young uh, Quagmire. Are you screwing with me here? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> See, she really doesn't know. She really uh, doesn't I thought, I thought maybe the character. I think every Star Wars fan would love that, to just jettison Jar Jar for... Uh, well, they would, yes. Yeah. So, uh, he seems like the character that would have done that, too. Like, Miso no do that. So, he, he was he was the rapey one. <laughs> he, he was, was the, the rapey, rapey one. He was the rapey one. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks, the rapey one. <laughs> yes. Star Wars did... Could you imagine now trying to do a story of like a teenage queen dating or being into like a right like a, a young boy like yeah. that would be like i guess star wars was ahead of its it time it was ahead of its time in the wrong way they were milfing in ways that weren't or <laughs> cougaring yeah, or whatever you know, that, that whole plot device never made yeah. any sense to me and it was always creepy yeah you know, it was this, always creepy this queen liking this little yeah. boy in the end yeah. uh, that's not right. i still think the kids aren't anakins that they're obi-wans I still think that's why Anna, Anakin was pissed. He's like, you you knocked up my wife, you creep. That would have made a better and story. And then he's like, yeah, and I'm not chopping up your arms and legs too. So so what about, like, how do you how do you handle this as somebody who's not into Star Wars? Do you, like, does it barrage, does the barrage of Star Wars just kill you, Jill? No, I just don't pay attention. You don't really? How no. do you Wait, not pay attention to this? It's though? everywhere. It's like, it's like every, I don't even realize sometimes the commercials are about Star Wars. I agree. Like, I, and, and so many commercials now, I notice, I'm sorry, no. I, but... So many commercials now will come on, and I'll hear the Star Wars. Song. And it's like a car commercial. Yeah, yeah it's like I. Yeah, I. I, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just oblivious to it. Really, you don't. Yeah, you don't it's just not on my radar. Like my my fiance is going to see it on Sunday, and I'm not. You're not going to go see. Well, it. You would no. not go with him to see this movie. No. Why? Now is that his request? No, actually, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, that. No. I, I, as a fan of movies, like if somebody doesn't want to go see a movie, well, that's true. I'm like, I don't want you there. Like, no offense. Yeah, like, no, that's no. my experience. That's a, that's like, I wish point. I had taken more people with me to see Justice League to distract me from it. So, um, <laughs> no, if I wanted to go, I, I would have went along. But no, I just have no desire. Yeah. I just, I, I think maybe, I, I think to really truly give it the, the chance that it deserves, I need to watch, what, what was the first one? The well, new, okay, so let's talk about that. Yeah, what is the first one? See, to me, and and having, I was a little kid when yeah. the first one came out, was Episode in 1977, but here's the thing, when it first came out in 1977, the first movie was just called Star Wars. There wasn't anything about... Uh, a New Hope. It there wasn't even episode right. It was Star Wars four in the title crawl. The very very first yeah, they time it that. was released, they, it just was a title crawl. Right. They added episode four, A New Hope. Right. I don't know if it was a year or months into it or whatever, yeah. but yeah. So really, that Star Wars was the first movie. Okay. So, but, but nowadays it's, it's known first... as Star Wars episode four, New Hope. Right. So episode yeah. one is the creepy one. Is the Jar Jar Binks and the kid Anakin with the... So wait. so do I start with the one that came out first or the one that's like kind of the beginning now? Well, that's funny because there are there is a website and I think we did oh, what something order, on Upgrade. Oh, yeah, what order to what watch What order them. you should watch these in because yeah. there's actually six or seven theories. Yes. Different versions of how you should watch them. Personally, I would watch them in the order they were released. So I would go four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight. That's what I would I would go episode four. Episode 5, Episode 7. 
Oh, I would avoid you would, the first really? three because I hate them. Jedi? And I think Jedi you can deal without because to me, I think you can sort of read up on that and pick it up. Now let me say this: uh, I think you can. I think you can watch the last half of Return of the Jedi. I don't think you need the first part. Oh, see, I actually think the first part's better. I do too, but I mean to get no caught up. In to get caught part. up. To get caught up, I think. Like to understand yeah, episode I, I eight. Like if you want to just do a refresher, you need to watch episode four. You need to watch Empire Strikes Back. You need to know how episode six ends, and then go into seven and eight. And to be honest, you can kind of swap episode four and seven because they're very similar. They are very similar in terms oh, of like, like well, the, once like, you see ep- yeah. now you obviously didn't see seven. Yeah, no. you didn't see Force Awakens. Yeah, and I think that was a major yes. complaint with a lot of fans about Force yeah. Awakens was it was almost too much like a New Hope. Right, and and it was. And so that I'll was say a this, little Joel, bit disappointing. I think of the seven Star Wars movies, there might be in terms of quality three full films worth of... I would agree. Yeah. I like would agree. So, episode four and episode five, absolutely. And then I think you can combine all the other ones and get a third one. So I recently watched episode one again. I was so you TV. haven't missed much is what I'm saying. You've right. you've probably been smart about this. So uh, I, I, If you only could watch one of these movies, I would definitely watch Empire Strikes Back. That is, to me, yeah. the best of the bunch. It's the least connected, I think. Like, you don't need to know all the other stuff. No. You they, can turn that on and yeah. be like, okay, there's good guys. You know who they end. are going into yes. this. Yeah. Did you have a question? No, but, uh, well, the movie, I think one of the stations this weekend had, uh, this past weekend had a marathon on. Oh, yeah. Yes. Or something. Yeah. And that's what we were watching. Well, I really wasn't paying attention. But <laughs> I saw the part. I forget who it was, but they banged they banged their head on something, and they left the they left it in the. My fiance was telling me they left it in the movie. Oh, so that was the first movie that yeah. started okay. with New Hope. So I, pro- I probably should have. Oh no! Oh, the first one, not That's, the first one that was released. Th- yeah, that was number four, episode okay. four, New Hope, the first one released yeah. in seventy seven. So yeah, oh, one that was of the, the stormtroopers one. banged his head right. going into a, a scene, and they left it in the movie. So yeah. here's the okay. interesting thing, right? So they did episode four, episode five, episode six. Then episode one, episode two, episode three. But because the next one was episode seven, they actually, like, the seventh Star Wars movie is the seventh Star Wars movie. Yes. Yes. So they're back on now, track. Now they're back on okay. track. They're back on track now. Yes. So I probably should have watched that whole movie. Basically, here's Star would... Wars in a nutshell. There's these Skywalker people. They're very important. <laughs> they're and good. This is their fan. This is, they're sort of, this is sort of like Dynasty. Like, there's the, it is the inner much... workings of the Skywalker family. And you're kind of like, that family needs some therapy. Like, massive yeah. therapy. I knew Darth yeah. Vader bad. Yes. Except he's also kind of good at the end. Eh. Yeah. It's well, supposed to be a redemption story. Yes. Uh, but I, I don't have a problem as much. I know there are so many people out there who absolutely despise the first three films. I don't despise them. I don't think they're that bad. Watching it again, that little boy cannot act. and it's, He also and, apparently cannot function. I think he's in like jail or something now. Like, oh, I, I don't think, know about that. I think the guy that played him has had like a mess of a life. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it was that's bad. And and they get into minutia like midichlorians. And yeah, they get it's into, a little it, over there. Yeah, it, he kind of screws it up with that. I agree. But there were moments from the first one that actually were funny. I liked Watto. I liked um, some of the stuff that went on right. uh, with Amidalia. I think so, the comparison I make to Star Wars is a pirate season. <laughs> no, seriously. It's a very long process. I mean, you have to commit yourself if you really want to, you know, you're going to watch like eight movies. Yeah. You're going to watch this new one, right? There are going to be real good moments. Mm-hmm. There are going to be real bad moments. And there are going to be people on both sides who feel strongly. Like, for instance, there are people who may not love everything the pirates do, but they're diehard pirate fans and they're going to see everything the pirates do. Right. There are people who hate the way the pirates run business and you can't convince them anyway. And, you know, and then there are people who are just like, I'd rather watch, I don't know, the penguins. And they're in this connection, they're like the Trekkies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they you can't convince a star. Else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I know people that are like Star Trek fans, like my dad that yeah. are like, I'll humor you with your little space soap opera, but like but see, Star me, Trek is like there it's like the highfalutin. But see, uh, I actually think of Star Trek as a as a notch below Star Wars. To me, Star well, Wars is you're sophisticated. A Star, Wars <laughs> Star Wars is sophisticated and Star Trek is not. And I think it's mainly because the first iteration of Star Trek was a TV show and it was real cheesy. It did cheesy. have William Shatner though. But it was cheesy as hell. And it had William Shatner. Cheesy as hell. And it had Spock. Well, that part was good. 
I, I've never seen it, but yeah. I know Live Long and Prosper. See? And that, that weird thing they did. Yeah. There I feel you like you can do it. Jill can do it with yeah, her fingers. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Good for you, Jill. It is. It's not. I've never been able to do it with the fingers. That's the problem. <laughs> well, uh, never mind. Well, we've come full circle. <laughs> yeah, we've come full circle. Literally. And figuratively. We've come full circle to why, there, oh, why you guys had that hot mandate. My yes. God. So, it was nice. We yeah. talked. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't talked in so yes, long. Yes. Um, but yeah, so it's Star Wars week. And, it is. You know, it's, uh, I'm, it's, I'm excited it's to go thing. see it, I, I will say. It's like it interrupts Christmas. I love it when Star Wars interrupts the Christmas season. Like right when I'm about to be like, oh man, like I'm kind of Christmas out or the stress of it. You get re so Star Wars and then I'm like, man, I'm everything out. I'm out Star Wars. I'm out. <laughs> but I see, I saw on your Facebook that you put up your tree. You, you, I you did. Went, you went full Christmas I did. My year. nephew came over and he's like, Uncle Rob, we're going to decorate. So I took him to the mall to pick out an ornament, which turned into letting him pretty much do whatever the hell he wanted at the mall. And then we get back to my house around like 830 and he's like, well, let's put on a movie. And we'll watch a movie while we're decorating the tree, which became him watching a movie while I decorate oh, the yeah. tree. <laughs> it often becomes so, that. And then, so I was really sore Saturday because we did this on Friday night. And I'm like, I'm old. I was moving around under the tree, making sure everything's right. And then Sunday, my mom's like, can you come over? And every year I go over and I deliver my mom her, uh, or I take down my parents' uh, Christmas decorations in the boxes. And they have, you know, probably 20 boxes of decorations. And on the very last box... I slipped on a coat that had fallen off the banister, mm. and I just did it right down the steps. Oh, man. So, like, I woke up Monday like, I don't think I'd have been able to see the Star Wars movie Monday. Oh, my. I, I was like, oh, my arm. Like, I needed the Darth Vader, you know, suit at that point. Uh, I was in a world of pain. I was like, who knew Christmas was so painful? You fell down a full flight? I fell down, yeah. I was like eight Damn. or nine steps. Like, it was not fun. And not one of the not one of the uh, ornaments broke. That's I preserved wow. the ornaments. That's impressive. My collarbone isn't functioning as <laughs> okay. well. But, yeah, okay. you know. You know, all things considered, you got to That's why I ate so slow yesterday. Chris was down with the second plate. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Fork. <laughs> So yeah, so no, I get into I as antisocial as I am, I I like to decorate my house for Christmas, no, and you know I love the Hallmark movies too. So. That's right. Oh, I can't as much as you can't stomach most movies. I can't stomach. Hallmark. See, I figured, I won't even watch the Hallmark. I figured out oh, why I like good. them okay. though. I finally figured out why I like them. They all start on an even hour: two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock. <laughs> okay. They're all two hours. They all have the same plot. And it hit me the other day. I don't actually sit down and ever watch one start to finish. But it occurred to me, I think probably Saturday night, Rob, you, as I talked to myself in my warmly lit house, house, I said, Rob, you're not watching these movies, but you have timed it so you know that at the second break of the first hour... This is what happens in the plot. And this uh, is what... Uh, so I'm basically mixing and matching them, and it's almost like soothing to my ADD. It's so like, it's like a soap opera on daytime TV where yes. they used to have them, where you can come in like At any years moment later and, like, and know exactly. This is when they're fighting. Yeah. This is when they're sad. It's not going to work out. This is when they give up something and reunite for Christmas. Like... Yeah. You know, and I'm just like mixing in. Like, I don't know who's in who now, but yeah, it's who's in who. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's the uh, that's the Hallmark After Dark. Yeah. Actually, we I need think, that. Yeah. I think Hallmark After Dark would work really well. Yeah, yeah we need awesome. that. Awesome. I would watch 50 that Shades one. of Santa. You know? I like that one a lot. That's when we're 50, coming over with the beer. 50 Fluffs of Clouds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be fine. But we wouldn't turn the Christmas tree on for that. Why? We'd turn something else on. Yeah. yeah. Be oh. dirty. So, anyway. Um, will we will we be talking to the people again? I don't think so. No, I think this, this is, is it for the year. Really? So, I won't know. We, we, no, I think we're declaring it. This is it for the year. Oh, okay. So, oh, we should call it. Yeah. yeah. So, from all of us at Upgroove, and that would be Rob Rossi, Chris Pastrick, and Joe Leonard, we wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, uh, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, joyous Kwanzaa. This is the Upgroove Podcast. Happy uh, 2017, everybody. 2018 is next. Upgroove podcast was recorded at Trib Total Media Studios in Pittsburgh.